Asteroid warning, ESA's chilling imminent earth strike prediction, and millions to be evacuated. Callum Hoare Express UK reports, chilling footage emerged of the European Space Agency, ESA, dealing with the hypothetical imminent threat of an asteroid hurtling towards our Earth. We know that we've had a number of asteroid strikes. Our Earth is scarred by these events. Not only our Earth, we also have them on the Moon and on Mars. And uh, recently, uh, such an asteroid that we had not seen struck the Aleutian Islands in the north of the Pacific Ocean. This was a couple of months back. Thank goodness it was in an area that was uninhabited and we didn't have any casualties. Just recently, the asteroid 2019-OK was seen coming at us. It flew very close to us, skimmed us actually, and we only saw it 24 hours before it approached us. So we don't see all the asteroids coming at us. Asteroids capable of destroying cities on Earth, the city killers, have the potential to slip through NASA satellites, giving humans only days to prepare. And as a result, scientists at the ESA concerned about the threat to Europe are launching a new 915,000 pound telescope in the next week. It's called the FlyEye. FlyEye will be able to scan space and identify any possible objects heading to Earth, giving enough time to plan accordingly. The ESA released their plans to the public in a no-nonsense video which did not spare the niceties and dug straight into what would be a catastrophic situation. The hypothetical simulation played out a terrifying scenario with an asteroid on course to strike Earth in 2028. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? We have asteroid 1990 MU coming at us in 1827, and we have the Apophis asteroid coming at us in 2029. The one coming in in 2027, the other one coming in 2029. So this hypothesis, hypothetical asteroid is basically around the timing of these two asteroids coming at us. The newsreader says, the top story today remains last week's discovery of an asteroid as big as a city block that is heading to Earth. According to initial predictions, it's forecast to hit somewhere between Tokyo and Copenhagen in just 24 days from now. So that covers, of course, just about a third of the planet. So um, that's a hypothetical scenario, of course. And they go on to say, simulations indicate the impact will provide enough energy to destroy a city 10 kilometers from impact, heat will ignite clothing and cause third-degree burns. The UN is again today meeting to determine if the evacuation should be ordered. The footage then showed the ensuing panic from scientists who are expecting to, uh, the asteroid to hit Earth due to the lack of apparent information. One claims they are planning to move millions of people it's never been done. I don't know if it can be done. However, a second scientist claimed the situation by explaining how the Fly-Eye Telescope can help. She says, in 2019, ESA began building a network of Fly-Eye Telescopes to detect and follow asteroids. Without this, Europe would not have the necessary data to receive to react wisely to any future forecast impacts like this one. The impact corridor is narrowed and confirmed. It's going to hit the, the South Pacific, so no evacuation needed. How convenient, the simulation. The simulation scenario was presented by the ESA to emphasize the importance of their new asteroid tracking telescopes. Up to four fly-eye telescopes will be located worldwide. Data will be sent to the International Astronomical Union's IAU's Minor Planet Center in the USA, the world's central clearinghouse for all asteroid sightings. 
The telescopes are designed using a technique explored, exploited by the fly's compound eye. These bug-eyed telescopes split each image into 16 smaller sub-images, increasing the total amount of sky that can be observed and expanding the field of view. By placing one in the north and one in the southern hemisphere, the entire sky will be scanned within 48 hours. Simulations have shown that about four asteroids larger than one meter can be detected every year before they will impact on Earth. The ESA said, as of March 2019, we know of more than 600,000 asteroids in our solar system. 600,000! Of these, around 20,000 are near-Earth objects, 800 of which are in ESA's risk list, meaning that they merit close follow-up observations. And we also have more of asteroid problems. NASA panics as freak double asteroid Didymus hurdles towards our Earth. Brian McLeegan of Express UK reports, it's a double asteroid, that's why it's called Didymus, which means twin in Greek. The Didymus twin asteroid, classified as potentially hazardous, posing an impact risk to our Earth. It's a city killer asteroid, and it's now being targeted by the European Space Agency in a bid to deflect it from a possible Earth-bound collision course. Well, we know that NASA is going to be sending its Didymus uh, asteroid mission there. I don't know why the European Space Agency is doing the same. Are they both going to be pushing it away? I have no idea. Now, the European Space Agency will accompany the NASA DART spacecraft that will collide with the sun-bleached rocky surface of the heroic effort to dis in the heroic effort to discover if this asteroid can be deflected from its precarious waltz around the Earth. Speaking of Europe's contribution to an international planetary defense test, astrophysicist Brian May said, if we're going to find out if it's possible to deflect Didymus, it's going to be really, really hard. Aiming at a 160 meter wide target across millions of kilometers of void. Could we stop an asteroid hitting planet Earth? Well, the dinosaurs couldn't, but we humans have the benefit of knowledge and science on our side to give us some appreciation for the size of the near-Earth hazard, Mr. May said. Imagine a rock the size of a mountain with another rock the size of a great pyramid at Giza swinging around it. The Hera spacecraft is going to show us things we have never seen before. It will be humanity's first ever spacecraft to visit a double asteroid. Hera is the first step in helping the ESA to find out if it would be possible to deflect this type of an asteroid on a collision course with Earth. It's like a dry run of a bigger thing, obviously. They have to get to the uh, implementing this in a, in a real situation, so they have to do this. The mission will revolutionize our understanding, they say, of asteroids and how to protect ourselves from them, and therefore could be crucial for saving our planet. First, NASA will crash its DART spacecraft into the smaller asteroid known as Diddy Moon before ESA's Hera comes in to map the resulting impact crater and measure the asteroid's mass. Hera will carry two CubeSats on board, which will be able to fly much closer to the asteroid surface, carrying out crucial scientific studies before touching down. Hera's close-up observations will turn asteroid deflection into a well-understood planetary defense technique. The Hera mission will be presented to ESA Space 19 Plus meeting this November, where the European Space Ministers will take a final decision on flying the mission as part of the agency's broader planetary defense initiatives that aim, of course, to protect Europe and the world's citizens from such an impact. DART will then hit the smaller asteroid, which is about 160 meters in length. 
It's nine times faster than a bullet, approximately 3.7 miles per second, according to a statement. Now, how you'll be able to land something on something that goes that fast is beyond me. Now, Lindley Johnson, planetary defense officer at NASA headquarters in Washington, said DART would be NASA's first mission to demonstrate what's known as the kinetic impactor technique, striking the asteroid to shift its orbit to defend against a potential future asteroid impact. This approval step advances the project towards a historic test with a non-threatening small asteroid. The full mission is called AIDA, A-I-D-A, and will be run by the ESA and NASA. AIDA will target uh, 65803 Didymus, a binary asteroid system in which one asteroid is orbit orbited by the smaller one, the Didy Moon in this case. The primary asteroid is about 800 meters in diameter. Its smaller sat satellite is about 150 meters or 490 feet in diameter, in an orbit about one mile from the primary. Luckily, Didymos is not an Earth-crossing asteroid, and there is no possibility that the deflection experiment could create an impact hazard on Earth. The proposed European Space Agency mission will map the data from the diverted asteroid. Of course, they, just ha they have to divert it a significant amount not just a couple of inches or feet, but a significant amount to knock it off its trajectory. And uh, they will perform a high-resolution mapping of the resulting impact crater. Patrick Michael, director of research at Francis Côte d'Azur Observatory, said, the actual relation between projectile size, speed, and crater size in low-gravity environments is still poorly understood. Having both small carry-on impactor, SCI for short, and HERA data on crater sizes in two different impact speed regimes will offer crucial insights. These scaling laws are also crucial on a particular basis, practical basis, because they underpin how our calculations estimated the efficiency of asteroid deflections are made, taking account the properties of the asteroid material as well as the impact velocity that's involved. This is why ESA's HERA is so important, not only will we have DART's full-scale test of asteroid deflection in space, but also HERA's detailed follow-up survey to discover Didi Moon's composition and structure. HERA will also record the precise shape of the DART crater right down to centimeter scale. So building on this Hayabusa 2 impact experiment, DART and HERA between them will go on to close the gap in asteroid deflection techniques. It'll bring us to a point where such a method might be used for real in the future. Didi Moon will easily be the smallest asteroid ever explored, meaning the space rock will provide insights into the cohesion of material in an environment of negligible gravity, more than a million times weaker than Earth. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.